Hi, I'm Hyun Ha from KAIS. I'm going to introduce our geometric depth estimation approach from an uncalibrated small motion clip. This work is a joint work with uh, Song Won Im, Jae Sik Park, Hae Gon Jung, and In So Kwan. Small motion clip means a short video clip with small viewpoint variation. This video, for example, contains only one second of footage where the viewpoints are slightly changing. Let's think about how we capture an image. Usually, we just grab the camera, point it to the scene, hold it steady, and shoot. During this process, in fact, we generate so many small motions, such as pointing, hand shaking, breathing, and shutter pressing motions. The beauty of small motion is that it can naturally happen like this. If we capture a little more images just before and after the shooting, we can easily obtain this kind of small motion clip. In this research, we recover a high quality depth map from an uncalibrated small motion clip with a simultaneous self calibration of the camera. To our knowledge, this is the first self calibrating approach for depth from small motion. Recently, there have been several depth from small motion approaches. Josh and Zinnik proposed a plane parallax scheme where images were aligned by 2D transformations and then from the remaining disparities, relative depth information was extracted. Yu and Gallup brought two effective techniques, a small angle approximation for rotation and inverse depth for points. With these techniques, they show that camera poses and scene geometry can be estimated in the bundle adjustment process. Inspired by their work, our previous approach explored a rolling shutter bundle adjustment for small motion. Although these methods show promising results under the small motion conditions, they should assume either distortion-free images or calibrated cameras. These are critical limitations from a practical perspective. For example, we cannot use our daily cameras like smartphones in their approaches because these cameras have built-in autofocus functions and it's not easy to keep their focus unchanged even for a few hours. So to avoid carrying a checkerboard, we try to make a breakthrough, achieving self-calibration from small motion. Small motion has been regarded as a challenging problem. Little is to say, uncalibrated small motion was even more challenging. First of all, small baseline is not really helpful to reduce depth uncertainty. As the second challenge, it is the degenerate case of two view methods such as 5-point and 8-point algorithms. These two challenges are well known and have been explored in the previous literature. The more fundamental challenge we face in the uncalibrated small motion case was the ambiguity between the focal length and geometry. <laughs> One naive way is to apply the successful self-calibration scheme in the conventional structure from motion to the small motion case. However, we observe that giving freedom to, to both the focal length and 3D point locations has negative synergy under the small baseline condition. With a small baseline and a few pixels of displacement between corresponding features, there exist multiple combinations of focal lengths and 3D point locations that are coupled to be projected to the same feature lo locations as shown in this slide. This ambiguity between the focal lengths and geometry gets more obvious as the baseline becomes smaller. In order to resolve this ambiguity, an effective solution was to describe the point location by using its normalized image coordinates in a reference view and an inverse depth value from the camera. In this way, the X and Y directional variation of point location could be controlled by the focal length, which results in the reduction of the ambiguity. It can also reduce the number of variables and regularize the scales between the variables, which are good additional properties. 
Since a 3D plane is now represented by its normalized image coordinates, the self-calibration must be integrated in the transformation from the input image domain to the normalized MIDI domain. The conventional distortion model maps the image coordinates to the normalized image coordinates by the non-analytic way. On the other hand, our distortion model works in a reverse direction, more uh, specifically the the analytic radial distortion function undistorts the input image coordinates to the normalized image coordinate. Our bond adjustment is formulated like this. This is the undistorted image coordinates of J feature in i view. And this is the reproduction of the corresponding 3D point, which is back projected from the reference image. The parameters are estimated by minimizing the hypernorm of their difference. To reduce the complexity, a small angle approximation was used for linearizing the rotation matrix. We validate our self-calibration by comparing the estimated focal length and radial distortion with the ground truth camera model. For this experiment, we captured 31 small motion clips at four different lens settings using a point gray machine vision camera and an iPhone 6 camera. At each setting, the ground truth was obtained using a checkerboard based calibration approach. These two tables show our method can estimate reliable intrinsic parameters from various small motion clips at different lens settings of different cameras. We compare the point clouds reconstructed by our bundle adjustment with one by previous method. Even though we do not use any prior camera information, the results were almost same while the previous method used the ground truth intrinsic parameters. Since we ob obtain the intrinsic and extrinsic camera parameters, we can apply the plane sweep stereo for dense depth map acquisition. One interesting observation here is that if the depth label is correct, the observed intensity profile is consistent thanks to the small viewpoint variation. Therefore, our matching cost is designed to leverage this benefit. For each pixel, we measure the variance of intensity profiles which were collected from all images based on a sweeping inverse depth. Here, two types of variance was used, intensity variance and the gradient variance. Compared to the conventional SAD, which can be uh, biased by the reference image, Variance has an advantage that it can consider all images equally. To compare the performances of SAD and Variance, we conducted a synthetic experiment. The winner takes all depth maps using SAD and Variance show clear difference in both the qual qualitative and quantitative aspect. This is because our variance based course is not biased to the reference image, which may contain image noise. Our approach further refines the winner takes all depth map via a confidence-based outlier remover and a tree-based depth refinement. The final depth map is preserving fine details as shown on the right side. We compared our method with the state-of-the-art method. Compared to their results, our results show better quality thanks to the power of our self-calibrating self bundle adjustment and dense matching. We also show the per performance increase by using our method in synthetic refocusing applications. Now I'm going to show some qualitative results. These data sets were captured using an iPhone when I traveled to France.
Here are some other examples. These are some results in Las Vegas. I captured these data sets in, the, in this morning on the way from my hotel to Caesars Palace. In conclusion, we propose a new method to recover a high-quality depth map from an uncalibrated small motion clip. It is the first self-calibrating approach for depth from small motion. By virtue of the self-calibration, it is easy to use and any modern cameras, including smartphones, can be utilized. Still, there are some remaining issues such as non-resisting, uncalibrated rolling shutter, and limited working space working range. Our code and the data set are available on our project website. For more information and discussion, please visit our poster. Thank you.